Good morning, church. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. We're so glad you're with us. As you're able, please stand and join us in singing our first praise song, Awesome God. And we do have an awesome God. Welcome, everybody. I'm Pastor Gary Wright, one of the co-senior pastors here at St. Andrews, along with my wife, Jane, who will be delivering the message today. We welcome all you here are gathered in the sanctuary, and those of you who have gathered with us on live stream. It's going to be a wonderful morning of, of praise and worship. First of all, I just want to say we want to welcome those who are visiting with us today. If this is your first time in the narthex, on your way out, we have a gift for you. So please grab one on the way out. And also in front of you, in the pews in front of you, there's a Connect card. And we, we hope that you will fill that out so we can get some information, so we can start sending, we can get your contact information, so we can start sending you things. What's going on at the church? So something happened with the hurricane last week that zapped our microphones. So bear with us. Um, anyway, so, and also in front of you is, is a prayer card. If you'd like to fill out a prayer request, you can do so. You can drop them in a the basket at, at offering time, or you can drop them off at the... Uh, is there a mic down here? Oh, okay. Let's, let's try this. Can you hear me? Okay, there we go. Um, so, some announcements here that we have a new member class coming up on November the 3rd, Sunday, November 3rd. Uh, if you're interested in joining the church, then we'd ask that you uh, sign up for it. Go online and sign up for it. Also, November 3rd is our All Saints Sunday. And that is a very poignant time in the life of our church in that we honor and remember those who we have lost in the past year. So, mark that on your calendar for that day. Uh, November 16th is going to be our campus cleanup, where we have, we always have a good group of people, about 40 or 50 people that come to the church and help clean up the, the grounds and the area and to make it look really nice for Christmas and Advent season. And it's always a good time of fellowship, and it, it's from 8.30 to noon, and at noon we'll provide you a free lunch. So please sign up online for that. Also, um... You probably saw, I see some of you holding it right now. We got the new church directories have come in. Yay. So, so now you know everybody's name, right? So uh, we hope that if you, on your way out, if you want to grab one, we, we didn't print that many because we knew that a lot of you would be using the online version. But if you really need a printed version of it, we ask that you uh, go take one, only one per family. Uh, and then register the sign in that you have taken one. And we ask for a donation too, if you'd like, because they did cost money, these, these printouts, these directories. The fall festival is today. You probably saw all the decorations out there. 
It's the fall festival and the trunk or treat. Uh, we're very excited about it. We have a lot of people coming to it, a lot of the trunks that have signed up for it. You probably saw some scary ghosts and things out in the courtyard while you were coming in. There's also a corn maze back behind the Family Life Center. If you are, you know, bring your kids, bring your grandkids, come back at 2 o'clock. And we could still use some help, some volunteers. If you're willing to help, we could really use some. Um, and so finally, one last thing is we have a group of people here. It's a very oh, committed group of people, very dedicated, that are uh, living out God's call to justice. And we do this as a church in con conjunction with other churches in a ministry called HOPE, Hillsborough Organization for Progress and Equality. And it's to help you define community problems, research the long-term solutions, and implement those uh, solutions. So uh, here at St. Andrews, we met this challenge through our Justice Ministry Network members. And we have 31 of them here at this church. We we're very excited about that. So at this time, we'd like to welcome them and commission them and say a word of blessing over them. If you're a member of the network uh, ministry, the Social Justice Network Ministry, would you please stand or just or if you're on live stream, just type in your name so we know you're So please stand if you're part of that. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just lift up these that are standing, that those are, our, are part of our justice ministries. We just thank you for the work they do, that they're living out your call to justice. And we pray a blessing upon them and as they go forth, they will do so. And we, we, we uh, certainly appreciate the call that you, that you have in their lives and what they are doing to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give them a hand for those who are a part of it. Okay, so now let's uh, stand and greet one another in the name of the Spirit of the risen Lord. Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. prayer, uh, I want to let you know some special prayer announcements before uh, we have the pastoral prayer. First of all, Tamron's brother uh, suffered a stroke. We just found that word out this morning. Um, that is why Tamron's not up here with the bells today. Also, Alan Chastain's brother, Ryan Chastain, died this past week. Uh, there will be a service for him here in the sanctuary. That On Saturday, uh, November 23rd at 1 o'clock uh, with a reception to follow. And also, as you see, the chair up here, the empty chair with the robe on it, that is in honor and memory of Mary Stark, who passed away on Monday. A dear, beloved member of this church and member of the Bell Choir. And the chair represents her, how we honor her and how she leaves a void in her lives now that she's gone, but how she enriched our lives when she was here. So keep um, Mary and her family in your prayers and uh, Alan and his family in your prayers. So 
I want to start out with a time of reflection. And uh, our community has been really devastated this last month or so, the last few weeks. We've seen floodings, we've seen houses destroyed. Some of you have lost everything. Um, you know, a city may never be the same. Some people's lives may never be the same. The recovery will be long and challenging. But we have seen something else that gives us hope in our lives. Uh, we have seen uh, people reaching out to help others. The day after the hurricane, there were those out there in the streets going from house to house with chainsaws, with rakes, with shovels, with equipment to clean up yards and to open up blocked roads and driveways. People helping people, strangers helping strangers, doing whatever it takes to get people back on their feet. And for this, we are so thankful. We see God's love and mercy at work in our lives, serving others, caring for our neighbors. So during this time of reflection before the prayer time, let's give thanks to those who have helped us in the aftermath of the hurricane, those who have reached out to us, and all being done to the glory of God, the author of all love and compassion. Let us start with a moment of silent prayer and reflection. The prayer rail is open for anyone who'd like to come forward. Heavenly Father, we love you. Uh, you love us with such extravagant lung. Open our hearts and eyes to see that this morning, even when you seem so distant from us, you are nearer to us as the next breath. Let us be your representatives in the world so that those we encounter can see the love of Christ in us, that amazing grace and mercy. We ask that the Holy Spirit that lives within us lead and direct us and live out your presence in the world. We offer up the prayers of this congregation, those that have been made known and those that lie deep within our hearts. We pray for those who are grieving this day, the family of Mary Stark, the family of Alan Chastain. May you comfort them. We pray for those who are ill, that they may be strengthened and made well. May your healing presence surround them and grant continuing health to those who are recovering and are healing. And finally, Lord, bring to our minds this morning those whom we have forgotten that need our prayers and that need our attention. We thank you for your constant nearness and presence in our lives. May you be the Lord of our lives so that your will will be our guide. Your love will be the pattern of our lives. Your way will be our hope and your path will be our help. Fill us, Lord, here and now with a deep sense of your presence and strong sense of your empowering spirit. Take this time of prayer to renew our faith and refill our hearts. Revive our spirits so that we may live with hope and confidence this day and every day. In the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. <clears throat> And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Hi, I'm Manny Cabrera. And I'm Jessica Cabrera. And we are members here at St. Andrews. We've been members since 2001, I think, right? I think so. I think that our story really started during COVID, right? Yeah, I would agree with that. So we own an after school and martial arts business. And during the lockdown, that's really tough when you have a, a business that revolves around not just getting people together in close proximity, but getting kids together in close proximity. That year made a lot of people extremely nervous and, and unsettled. Even though we had some rough times at the beginning, by the end, our business was actually doing a little bit better than we had started before the pandemic. And we found ourselves saying, okay, now we've got this secure financial footing and we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing. So first thing we actually did personally as a couple is that we hired a financial coach. It helped us do things like budgeting, helped us, you know, do things relating to our business to be able to insulate us against future issues like what we experienced during the pandemic. And one of the things that he talked to us about was about how we take disciplined actions in every other area of our life and our business. And so taking disciplined actions with our finances was going to change that as well. If you think about taking disciplined action with going to the gym or taking disciplined action with your sleep schedule, those things will change those areas of your life. And so if you're taking automatic, systemized, disciplined action in your finances, those things are gonna change your finances as well. So one of the things that he encouraged us to do was take all of our monthly expenses and automate as many of them as we could. First thing he said was, oh look, you're tithing to your church. Great, let's make sure that we automate that just the same way that we're automating all of your bills. Because what brought us through COVID was the faithfulness of God and the faithfulness of our community. And so we're really excited about sharing what came out of that experience with the, with the community around us. So over the years, uh, as an organization with our business, we've supported the food pantry here at St. Andrews by hosting food drives and then donating all of the food. We've donated, I would say, hundreds of pounds of food over the last few years for the food pantry. In addition to that, we're also really excited about the fact that part of our, our giving here at the church also goes to support that to help people who are dealing with food insecurity in their home because it's very difficult to take discipline action. If you're just worried about basics like, hey, how am I gonna feed my children tonight? Or even how am I gonna make sure that my kids eat, but then I'm gonna go without myself. And that just creates stress all around. And so we're happy that we get to support something like that that alleviates that for a lot of people. And then I've also been really excited to support the Vitality Ministry. My dad has both dementia and Parkinson's disease but they live out of town and they don't have the kind of support that Vitality provides here in this community. So we've been really excited to help support that ministry as well. That is. That's good to High five. Our thanks, our thanks to Jessica and uh, Manny for that video. The month of October is actually stewardship month. We are not preaching on money this year. Um, instead, we're focusing on our Wesleyan roots but that doesn't mean we're not having stewardship. So in this next week, we will be sending out to you our packets. And we really ask that when you get the packet that you open up and spend some time reading it, the letter will give you a rundown of what we did in 24. We did a lot in 24, it's very exciting. So if you wanna feel good about your church, read that letter. And then on the back, on one side of a pledge card are our goals for 25, which we'll talk about even more in January. But then on the other side is an opportunity for you to pledge. Let us know what you plan to give in the coming year so that we can prepare our budgets right now for 25. So those should go out. Expect to start seeing them at the end of the, um, of the week. And then you'll have about two weeks. And then we'll have Commitment Sunday where you'll bring them all in, in once we get into November. So we just want you to know we are still having stewardship. We're just doing it a little bit different this, this year. And we appreciate your support. And now during this next special number by our bell choir, this is the time for our giving of our tithes and offering. We have baskets in the front, baskets in the back. You're welcome to get up and move. And then also the ways that are on the screen to give as well. Thank you, thank you for your always consistently generous spirits.
Thank you. Please stand as you're able and sing our doxology. today with grateful hearts. As we reflect on your holy scriptures today, may we give as a testament to our commitment to serve others, not seeking the highest places, but embracing the path of sacrificial love. Bless these gifts and use them to advance your kingdom. Remind us that true greatness always comes through serving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the Wesleyan tradition, we believe it is important to translate faith into loving action. Faith without works is dead. We view the Christian life as a dynamic journey rooted in a faith that works by love, leading to holiness of heart and life, active love of God and neighbor. So the very function, the purpose of a root is to soak up and retain water. Did you ever think about that? That's its entire purpose of a root. Soak up and retain water. Then the tree sends the water up through the trunk and it makes leaves, right? But that tree would not survive just on rainfall. You see... The tree survives because of the water that is below the ground, that the root continues to pull water from. Over the month of October, we are doing a series called Wesley and Rooted, and we're talking about how our faith and what we believe should impact our lives. And we believe that we are like a root planted by water. We believe we are rooted in God and his mercy and his grace. And we believe if we are rooted to God, that will carry us through the most difficult of challenges. That that's something that we can, that we can lean into. And in this past two weeks, you have probably found yourself in some way helping somebody since the hurricane. Maybe you have a a saw, or maybe you have a have some means of clearing away trees, or maybe you were just the person who made the coffee and took it to the person who had no power. I don't know, but we've probably all done different things. Maybe you prepared buckets. Maybe you made somebody a meal. But I want you to know that that is very defining of who we are as Methodists. We are called to serve. That is a, a core value of ours, that we can't call ourselves Christians without loving actively. There should be an expression of our faith. If we have faith, somebody better witness some kind of action. So our, our scripture reading today is in Mark 12, and it's a period of time when Jesus has been talking to different religious leaders, and these religious leaders have been antagonistic with him. They've been trying to bait him so that he'll say the wrong thing. And this is one section of that conversation. It's in Mark 12, verses 28 to 31. One of the legal experts heard their dispute and saw how Jesus answered them. And he came over and asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? And Jesus replied, the most important one is Israel. Listen. Our God is one Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
all of your being and all of your mind and with all of your strength. And the second is this, you will love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, this is kind of an interesting situation because I told you that you had these legal experts who were being antagonistic, but this guy's not. This guy is coming over and he seems to be on Jesus' side. And, and he comes over and he's asking for some clarity. You, you got to understand that there are 613 laws in the law of Moses. That's a lot of laws to, to follow and to, to live out in your life. And Jesus is bringing this down, 613 laws down to two. And, and this young man, from the, all the discussions, he wants clarity. He is not looking to trip Jesus up. He wants to hear more. And, and in, that, in that season, in that time in the first century, it was okay to be questioning and, and even discussing or debating. That was, that was fully respectful and appropriate. And basically what Jesus was doing here is that he was taking all of those laws, all 613 of them, and, and simplifying them. And this is how he was simplifying. He was basically saying, it's not so important what believers think about the law. It's as it is how faithfully they live the law. Did, did you catch that? It's, it's about how we live it. So there was this Christian ethics professor at a college. And he was going to give an exam to students. And they were still doing by paper, so this is an old story. And um, the kids get to, the, the students get to their classroom, and he hands out the test, and there's 10 questions. And they immediately realize these are 10 tough questions, like, this is going to be a lot of work. And they've only been given a certain amount of time. And the professor's very clear. This is your job. Read all the questions, answer them, and hand this in. And so a lot of them started reading the questions, but then they realized how hard these questions were. So they kind of stopped and they just dove in and started writing because, you know, you had to write fast. There was a lot of questions. And every question was pretty challenging. And um, some people... They were reading, and they just gave up. They were like, heck no, I can't do that. You know, you, I always know there's certain people that kind of just looking off into space. You know they just got overwhelmed, and they already quit. But there was one, one student, he, he read it, and he, was, he got right to work, and he, without, very shortly, he looked like he finished, and he walked up to the front and handed the professor his, his um his, his test, and he's smiling, and he leaves, and you know, we, we all hate those people, and, and, and you just go back to work, and they're all working really, really hard. Well, when it was all said and done, and everything was great, and only one person passed, it was that guy who finished so early, and the reason he passed is because if you would have read to the very end like you had been instructed, number 20 said this, you don't have to answer 1 through 19. All you have to do is write the name of the janitor who cleans this office, this school class. You see, the ethics teacher understood something about his class. They were all about the academics, but he questioned whether they were actually practicing the ethics, where they're actually loving their neighbor. You see, we are called to love all the people around us. Which you can't really love people if you don't know them. You can't love people if you've never talked to them. You can't love people if you never look at them. We're called to actively love. But I want you to hear something. Take heart. We do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. I mean, you don't do it alone. We had a baptism at 945. Little Oliver was baptized. And what happens in our baptize, baptism is we receive the Holy Spirit who resides within us, and he helps us do the hard stuff in life like loving others, like serving others, like, like having the energy to do the right thing. That's what the Holy Spirit's there for. So we don't ever do it on our own. We understand that we do it only because what God enables us to do through his Spirit. 
In fact, Dr. Clifton Black says it this way, we can't possibly find within us the power to give ourselves for others. God alone has made love a reality for us. One of my favorite passages of Jesus is called the Sermon on the Mountains in Matthew. It's five to seven, chapters five to seven. And it's this really like radical challenge to love others and, and to behave as Christians. And it, it, I mean, it's so hard that you know you can only do it with the help of the Holy Spirit. And then you get to the end and Jesus kind of sums up all this stuff he's been teaching in this, these challenges on how to love the gospel way. And then you get to chapter seven and, and, he, and he sums it all up and he, he gives us this illustration. And this is one you've heard a million times before, but since we've just gotten through Helene and then Milton, I think you're going to hear it slightly differently. So I'm reading it to you out of Matthew 7, verses 24 through 27. So Jesus is summing up all this challenge to love others. Everybody who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise builder who built a house on bedrock. The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew and beat against the house, and it didn't fall because it was firmly set on bedrock. But everybody who hears these words of mine and doesn't put them into practice will be like the fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, the wind blew and beat against the house, and it fell and was completely destroyed. Did you hear that verse a little different this time? In the past two weeks, if you don't know somebody who has lost their house, you can see it on the news. We are surrounded by people who have been devastated by the storms of the last couple weeks. People whose lives have been changed forever. And this is how Jesus is saying, if you don't actively practice your faith, you're like a person who has lost their house. It feels different now when you think of it, right? But I want you to hear something. This verse isn't for us in this moment right now. You see, God understands when we're exhausted. I've seen more people yawning this week. We have hurricane fatigue. That means between the last two hurricanes and everything connected to it, we're exhausted physically and emotionally. And that's okay. And God knows it. This verse is not meant to beat us up today. We need to understand that God understands when we're, we're at the end and we have no bandwidth to handle what is around us. We don't have energy to help others. But this verse is for those moments when we're so self-absorbed with our life that we don't bother helping anybody else. Those moments when we're just busy and we're maybe even having fun or maybe we're just put our heads down and we're moving forward and we're doing what we got to do. And it's in those times that this verse applies to us. We need to practice our faith. We need to have a testimony to our faith through works. The word love in its primary biblical root form, is a verb before it's a noun. Love is first something that we do before it is something that we feel. Jesus understood that. Jesus was constantly doing in his ministry. It was kind of amazing all the things he did. And he came to show us how to live. So how did Jesus love actively? Jesus cast out demons. He healed the sick. He enabled a paralytic to walk. He healed a woman who had bled for 12 years. He gave sight to a man born blind. He touched lepers. He ate with sinners and outsiders. He welcomed children and the most vulnerable. He fed hungry crowds. He carried the cross. He was put on the cross and he died on the cross. Everything about Jesus' life is around action, loving actively. That, that is the example. But you are given permission to act within who you are as a human being. 
Our Bishop Tom Berlin tells a story at one of his churches that he served. There was a woman named Frankie, and Frankie had this personal little mission. She, every Sunday after church, she would write 20 to 25 personal notes to people within the church. She would look around on Sunday and think, who should I send it to? And Tom said over the years, he got a couple of those notes. And he said, these notes were like amazing. He said, it's like they arrived on the day that I felt my lowest. Or it arrived on the day when I really needed to be encouraged. And what Frankie, this woman, did, she, she just would ask the Lord to help her know what to say. And he said she had this way of seeing something in you that you didn't see in yourself. And he said, this also taught me, too, that serving doesn't have to be gigantic. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. It doesn't have to be the hardest thing. Serving is serving within the life stage you are in in the health stage you are in, in the busyness time of your life you're in, but understanding we're still all called to serve no matter what stage you're in. You just have to find the way to serve that works for you now. That, that you somehow figure out how to use the spiritual gifts that the Holy Spirit is giving you. And then the Holy Spirit will give you the energy, but you do what you have the capacity to do right now. That, that's how it works. Richard Rohr, back in 1987, he's a, a Francescan priest that I, I really respect. And he started the Center for Action and Compliment, um, comp, Contemplation. Can't get the word out. And he started this as a nonprofit educational place to help people learn how to integrate their faith into their lives. And they've got eight core principles here at this center. And the eighth principle is this. We don't think ourselves into a new way of living. We live ourselves into a new way of thinking. So over the past 50 years, educators have learned that just going to class and, and sitting under a lecture will only do so much for you in your learning process. You see, the best way for you to learn is to sit under a professor and to learn and then actually do the work that you've learned about. It's when you, co when you combine the, intel the, the intellectual with the hands and the feet, actually doing what you're trying to learn about actually teaches you and transforms you into whatever the goal is to be. You see, we need both. Now, now last month, we talked about the brain and the development of the brain all through September and, and, and how God created this way and how he works through the different chemical of our brain and how our spiritual life is reflected there as well. But one thing we didn't really focus a lot on was the ego. God gave us something called the ego, which is a, a thing that preserves us because whatever it is you believe, you tend to believe pretty firmly, and you don't really change your mind. You tend to hold on to that belief, and that can be a good thing when you need to stand your ground. But that can also be a problem when you've made some decisions that are not good decisions, like I only want to give financially. I don't want to do. I only want to attend church, but I don't, I don't actually have to use my hands and my feet. That makes me uncomfortable, or I'm not that kind of person, or whatever. Whatever the reason comes up with it, we can come up with these ideas that are wrong, and the ego will hold on to them so tightly because it's convinced, and it works hard to never change. And the only way that we can really change who we are is when we sit under the Word of God and then we practice the Word of God. That is the only way to change and get out of that, that place that the ego will hold us to. Because when we don't practice our faith, we don't experience the transformation of Jesus Christ. We are called to love God, but we are called to love actively. 
and love the people around us. And we will only do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the only way it will happen. But when we faithfully serve, we are transformed to be the person that God created us to be. And who doesn't want to be the person God created us to be? Now, as you leave today, you're going to receive this little thing. It's kind of strange. It actually looks like this. It's a seed pod. Some of you don't know what a seed pod is. It's in there. And it's kind of wrapped in, in paper. And you, when you leave, when you take it home, when you get home, you're going to add just enough water to just slightly cover the seed pod. And it'll immediately expand. And then you're going to find a window, and you're going to stick this in the window. And this is supposed to be a reminder this week. We're going to talk about this for the next couple weeks. We were supposed to start it last week, but, you know, the hurricane. And so, um, but we want you to put this in your window and watch this take root and begin to sprout up. To remind us that we are rooted in a Wesleyan tradition. And I want you to ask yourself this question all week. Put it somewhere that you'll see it and ask yourself, am I loving actively? Am I living out my faith? And if you're not sure, how can God inspire you to see the things around you where you can serve? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jane. I enjoy when I learn things during a message. Love is a verb, so we have to actually do. If there was more doing of love in the world, it would be a better place for all of us to live. Would you please stand and sing with me the final hymn? A charge to keep, I have. If you're looking in your hymnals, hymn 413. <laughs> charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, a never dying a soul to save and fit it for the sky, to serve a present age, my calling to Master's will. Help me to watch and pray, and on thyself rely. Ah, should if I my trust betray, I shall forever die. Thank you to um, Marshall. He has been doing it all today. Janet is seeing a grandbaby. And so thank you very, very much for everything you did today. Um, I also want to acknowledge Nancy. It is so good to see you, having you with us. I see Megan and her team are all back there as well. Good to see you guys as well. Um, and for those of you who are online, we're so glad that you joined us today for worship. Be sure if you have children or grandchildren, come back to the Fall Festival at 2 o'clock today. It is going to be wonderful, and we encourage you to come back. You don't have to register. Just show up at 2 o'clock. Now receive this benediction. Go forth into this day, oh, knowing we are loved by a God who wants us to be his hands and feet, who will enable us to do the work, and who will bless us as we serve. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with a cord that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love, in love.
home.